Join us for a review of the Audi RS5 Coupé. Let's go! The whole Audi A5 range has been facelifted recently, so if you're just interested in a normal version, you will also gather a lot of important information here with this review today. Or maybe you check out the RS5, dream of that, and then go for a base A5 Coupé or Sportback or something. That could be a solution. Well, but here the RS5 Coupé has this really menacing front grille. In general, the grille has been made wider, and also you can see the honeycomb structure here with the high gloss black and then this quattro citations from the former quattro models and this is also then equipped with the RS design package also with carbon fiber so we have a carbon fiber lower spoiler lip right here high gloss black right there and the headlamps they would come standard already with matrix led for the RS5 but then optional yeah they always offer something optional <laughs> then there's optional the laser light you can see here and when you pick that one you also have the dark background this dark tinting and this is of course even more impressive 4 meters 72 15 foot 5 or 186 inches is the length of the Audi RS5 coupe Today I'm entering from this side. You can also get it as the sport pack when you rather want five doors instead of the three. Yeah, I mean three or five doors or two or four doors. It always depends if you count the rear hatch as a door or not. Yeah, <laughs> but back here to our coupe for today. You start with 19-inch wheels. Optional these 20-inch turbine wheels in the black style course even darker look then you have the rs5 batch right there this one said it earlier with the optional carbon fiber package so you have here the carbon fiber mirrors also carbon fiber lower spoiler at the side and this is also equipped with the carbon fiber roof a very impressive rear well some say that the a5 is one of the most beautiful cars with audi and i think i have to agree even though you know you can argue about if it's even more beautiful in the elegant style or if it's cooler in the sporty style, looking forward to your comment. Here the RS5, that's the badge right there. Then we also have the additional carbon fiber package. So this lip, you always get this lip, but then here also in carbon fiber. And as well here the strong lower end here with the carbon fiber. You already get a sports exhaust with the RS5, but optional for 1,200 euros, you can get this optional sports exhaust. Then with the high gloss black, and you can see the valve on the inside. The Audi RS5 features a 2.9 liter V6 bi-turbo with 450 horsepower, 3.9 seconds is the acceleration figure, 100 kilometers now or 62 miles now. And with a very nice engine bay here, everything fully packed. Oh, yeah, and if you want this here, the carbon fiber cover, yet another 500 euros. RS Alcantara scenery we have here with the flat bottom. That's a beautiful job and great grip, great size and everything. More carbon fiber inserts right here. Soft touch also at the top dashboard. 
virtual cockpit. It still starts with analog instruments, optional this then, soon more deals to that definitely. With the facelift, upgraded infotainment system, and we'll take a deep look at that very soon. Seats here, you get RS sports seats, integrated head restraint. Usually they would start with Alcantara, that's of course then way to go as well, because they keep cool in summer and are warmer in winter times. This is the optional animal skin pack, and especially this quilting that looks quite fancy, but in combination with a slick animal skin surface, it really reduces the comfort on long-term travels. I've experienced that quite a lot of times. However, overall, this mid-size style is still a very good compromise between sportiness and comfort. So the seat form itself is good, gives you good support here, and it's not too long on the exterior, this mid-size segment, but you already have a lot of comfort on the interior, even on longer journeys. So if you compare it also to the compact size cars, here, when you're a little bit tall like me, 1 means 86 or 6 with 1, you already get good comfort. The A5 is called a rather flat car, but here I still have some headroom left, so I can find a good seating position, manual control here of the steering wheel. Now the interior overview. You can see the big news in general with all A5 facelift is new 10.1 inch screen. So this is then also by a touch and it's also easily accessible. Yeah, while driving, of course, you shouldn't look at that too much, but since it's very close to you, that's the thing. It, may, it looks popped on that, but then again, the advantage is that you can easily access it. Soon more details to that. The MMI knob in the lower part is gone then because they set it all then on the touch. You can argue about that, what's the best way then. Both have arguments for that. Once again, the Alcantara steering wheel, a beautiful piece and the perfect size. I think to me, this is actually a perfect steering wheel. A little situation in there, consistent on the inside, such a good grip and such a great feeling. And we have the optional virtual cockpit, 5.1 inch or small screen with analog gauges would be standard. These here 12.3 inch optional digital instruments or virtual cockpit, zoom already to that. We have the shifting pedals here with a gap in between, high class, really good stuff and also give you good feedback. On the steering wheel, we either zoom in and out of the map of the virtual cockpit, we can control what we want to see, change the view and so on. On the right side, we have the volume control. Um, some kind of a voice input, but not a natural one yet. And there's the RS mode button. And when I hit that one, it's easy to change the driving mode while driving. And I can actually then change between a normal driving mode, but I can also actually set how I want to have the RS mode one and two in the main menu. I can soon show that to you. And now the screen details. And this is a great overview because it's so simple. And you can also, by the way, um, change something. For example, the Apple CarPlay is at the moment here and when I hold this one here, I can, you know, like in the smartphone, for example, I can you know, change where it is actually appearing. So let's say I want to have it um, right here and there we go, done. And then I have it on the first screen instead of the radio. That would be, for example, better for me. That's the first thing I want to read and here, the closer to the steering wheel. So um, that's how I would do it actually. And then you can also change what's, for example, here on the left side. You can, for example, say that I want to have the GPS um, hot gun left side on the upper part. Um, this would also be possible. Um, so a lot of possibilities you have here. Why not? Then here in the car settings, there is the Audi drive select, for example. And then you can here have the basic driving modes, but then also the RS modes. And in this case, for example, I have put the RS1 mode over to some dynamic features, but then here the DRC, this optional suspension, you can set in three different stiffness modes, but it's not adapting uh, in an adaptive, not acting in an adaptive way. So, but three different settings and then they are like this. So steering balance, for example, engine sound already more, and then the RS2 mode I have set to all the way, sporty, 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 sporty. This is one setting you could, for example, use for that. Well, you can expect there's not so much legroom in the rear left. If you want rear passengers, you rather go for the A5 Sportback or here also for the RS5 Sportback. But since you want to put a comment with a time code, Thomas in the back seat, I will do you the favor. <laughs> so you can get this strap here and then push it forward electrically. That's of course a good solution like this. And then you can also get inside. 
question is just about the leg room and I mean I need to well first of all you can actually see how it's like here it's actually quite um, cozy when it's a little bit you know caged in headroom wise I mean when I sit with a relaxed spine that does work however when I put my spine up a little bit then I do hit the seating but still somewhat okay but again you would go for the sport bag two single seats then we also have cup holders here they are also um, cubby hole here and then they are also adaptive there we go <laughs> so yeah left and right single to put in and out you can also use this one here as a ski hatch already from here that's possible and you even have rear climate unit optional USB A chargers and a rear seating unit that's actually quite good but as for the trunk it's of course easier to access when you have the sport bag version but here in the coupe still quite okay um, you can see here we also put two suitcases here and it is actually possible to put it over each other so that's actually a good surprise i would say why not and then let's put them out and we can also show you something more how it looks like empty below this cover you still have some more space like this it's just a cabinetry in the rear welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the audi rs5 coupe and welcome to the german motorway We'll get onto the motorway. I'll put it in the RS2 mode, make it sporty as possible. We do have the all-wheel drive, the Quattro with the rear wheel bias, so a little bit more rear wheel torque right there. And the more I hit the throttle, the more we'll be transport on the front wheels. And that's of course also a safety aspect because here the road is also a little bit wet, but this will keep us safe. We we'll start from 40 kilometers now and let's go. that's 160 already that went quick and due to the all-wheel drive also a nice distribution so a very smooth acceleration it was very powerful but smooth at the same time and in perfect control of the vehicle so yes a rear-wheel drive only will be let's say more extreme or something you know but this one here then always more controlled but since this is the classic all-wheel drive, not the Quattro Ultra, here again rear bias, converter automatic gearbox, and I really like to have that instead of the front plus rear with the dual clutch transmission. And what's also cool is, you know, as soon as you go off the RS mode here in the comfort mode, car shifts up and here at about 130, 140 kilometers an hour, which is about 80, 85 miles an hour, so silent in this vehicle, has a great wind coefficient so I mean everything goes very streamlined so silent one of the most silent cars in the mid-size segment and that's also relaxing in a way you know so this car is small and relaxing at the same time so to say but of course suspension is only relaxing when it's here a very well-built autobahn then it's actually actually fine you know then you don't feel that we have a fixed stiff suspension However, here in the normal mode, I have said it's, that it just you know, is in the plane most comfortable of the three settings. And in the RS modes then, I've put it to the stiffer setting. And then you feel, even if there's no like potholes, some waves in the road, it's like brr, 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 brr. Maybe you see it on camera. So it's, it's really a notable difference you feel there. You have, a, of course, then a little bit more connection to the road. But yet again, suspension-wise, I would really leave it in the most comfortable setting that's still okay and especially when you like rolling in traffic like this um, that's then in this case a good compromise of sportness and comfort what's that interesting covers there <laughs> so always interesting uh, things to see yeah, on the motorway and I know especially from uh, when you're from, from a country where it's not possible to drive all the way free this for example a motorway part where it is actually possible to drive unlimited speed but you see, you always need the according traffic, and that's not always the case. To me, the most important thing is always keeping the distance to the car in front of you when driving fast. That's the most important thing. I feel sometimes it's even safer to hit the left, left lane, drive a good speed, and then stay there and, you know, even drive, if you drive a little bit faster, 
then to switch lanes back and forth, that's sometimes more dangerous, I think. So now we can accelerate further. And that's 200 kilometers or 125 miles an hour and how stable the car is still and how silent it is considering still in here, that's really amazing. And I have perfect control of the vehicle. Of course, again, safety first. Always check if there's someone you know, you need to anticipate. So that guy may be switching to the left lane and is driving slower and then you have to pay attention and brake in advance. That's why, and also like the, you know, you, you cannot underestimate how important keeping a proper distance is at that speed. You need to have that distance and, you know, don't let anyone else tell you something or when people are going in and just keep another good distance. That's so important here when driving at higher speeds. And I'm really amazed that, you know, it's not the biggest car, it has not the longest wheelbase, but how sovereign it is already on the road, that's just such a great feeling. And I feel it really drives better with the softest suspension setting. I think it feels, let's say, better and safer, and more connected to the road, actually. Um, I mean, you can say the stiffer it is, the more connected it is to the road, but I feel you have a better sporty handling also, when the suspension is a little bit less stiff because it more adapts to the road in a way. So I like the softer suspension setting here best and it's already more than sporty enough, no doubt. If I do a lane change here, by the way, at 180 km an hour, look at how easy and stable the car remains. Just so flawless. So it's such a great ride in this vehicle and also definitely more fun than you would go a segment above with the bigger like you know like an r6 or r7 which are also awesome vehicles no doubt but this one definitely is more fun to drive yes the segment below that is you can say in a way because of the smaller segment like a r3 or something could also be more agile when you're like a tight track or something Yet again, you lose comfort because you don't have so much space on the interior. And to me, as a tall person, I always have more comfort in the mid-size segment vehicles than in the compact cars. So, um, for having the most fun and yet already having comfort, this then here, you know, this size would be my pick. Although I have to say, I think I would be totally happy with the S5 already. about the fuel consumption when you really keep it calm or like cruise control motorway and so on you can score some decent consumption figures like eight liters on one kilometers so would be about 29 mpg 35 mpg uk 29 for us so that's really you know pretty decent for this car however it is very sensitive to more throttle input of course it's with every vehicle but here especially and also very sensitive to city driving especially when the engine is still cold that's also again a problem with every um, combustion engine but here we notice that then the consumption really goes very high then it's like a two digits like way more than 10 liters on one kilometers and then would be just like slightly over 20 mpg and now to our conclusion for today with the audi rs5 coupe i think it has been Quite a nice change to have this one here as a shooting location. I hope you enjoyed all the shots we had here for you today. And of course, the information as always. Exterize, such a stunning vehicle with this dark sport look, especially with the optional design packages we had here today. As a coupe, but also as a sport bike, as it's also available here as the RS5 sport bike. So if you want it a little bit more practical, you would go for the sport bike. The better compromise between sportiness and comfort is definitely the S version. The S5, maybe as a convertible, that would actually be my personal choice because I like the better, you know, compromise between sportiness and comfort. Here the RS5 really goes in that very sporty direction, especially suspension-wise, since no adaptive suspension is available here. However, when the road is still good, it was also reasonable here because at least even though the suspension here is not adaptive, the optional one, you can set it to these three different levels, fixed levels done. Interior-wise, it's a very high build quality. Sadly, not so much animal skin alternative in the higher specs. Well, at least you can also get the Alcantara seat with 
let's say, the main Alcantara share that would be the seat to go then here. I really like this mid-size segment because it's not too long on the exterior, but you already have a good long-term traveling comfort on the interior. That's, I think, the specialty of this very segment. When you go a little bit bigger, then you lose something of the handling. Here, the handling is still so crisp and precise. It's just a pleasure to drive this one in a sporty way. And of course, abundance of power there. So what do you think here about our driving experience and the presentation of the RS5 Coupe? We will, of course, keep you, you know, entertained with some other versions here, sporty Audi models. We have a lot of our channel already in the video description or the pinned comment. We will link you some interesting other videos related to this one here. Well, and then what to criticize? <laughs> it's just about the price. So we were talking about that yesterday um, before I took like another look at the price. I said like, oh, wait a minute, like a normal A5 is about 40k when you put something in there. And, and usually at like, the top models are double the price than the entry model. So about 80k. Yeah, that was correct. So this one starts at about 80,000 euros or dollars. But then again, if you think about carbon ceramic brakes, RS design, dynamic pack, optional sports exhaust, carbon blah, 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 carbon fiber roof. This car is at Sensia right now, 120,000 euros. And that's hardly wearable for a mid-size segment. Yeah, so better you just scroll back to the beginning and enjoy the video and you don't have to spend so much money. Thank you again for watching today and see you next time.